Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is the hardware review of the Kyocera Echo dual-screened Android phone. Let's get to it. So it's very exciting not only for you guys, but for us to be able to uh, look at and see a dual screen Android phone come out. For a while it has seemed like most phones have been the same. They're slate devices uh, with similar specs, similar feels, and and, and aesthetics, and it's finally great to see a phone come out that is just entirely different, that represents a true first for the in industry, the first dual-screened Android phone. Whether it makes sense, we're going to help you decide that for yourself, uh, but in this video we're going to talk about the hardware, what's inside, how to operate the phone in terms of whether you can flip open the second screen with one hand if you need to, and talk about the ergonomics of the phone in your head. Okay, so first let's talk about some accessories that come with the Echo. Uh, you might remember that we got this thing in the box which contained a screen cleaner inside. And we thought that maybe uh, this was some sort of case, but as you can tell there's no way this could possibly be a case. It seems to be just an extra, uh, it's almost like a business card holder, kind of just an extra thing they include. And they include a screen cleaner because you've got two times the number of screens to keep clean, so you're going to want to keep that handy or at least you know, polish the screen a little bit with a soft t-shirt uh, because the screen gets really dirty really easily as you're going to see in the, in the course of this video. Now something else you get is a second charger. You know, it's interesting, at the Kyocera event back in February 2011, uh, the guys from Kyocera were talking about this phone. They were talking about how this phone with two screens is going to eat up a lot of battery power. And we were thinking, well, are they going to tell us about some new battery technology that, they, that they're uh, releasing with this phone? And no, they were just going to talk about how they're adding a second battery to uh, the box of the Kyocera Echo, uh, which is kind of cheating. But naturally, with two displays, you're going to eat up a lot of juice. A display is what uses the most amount of battery in any phone. So with two screens, you're really going to run low quickly. So they include this charger. Just pop this in. It's 1,370 milliamp hours, just like the battery that comes in the Echo, obviously. You've got a couple of charging options here. And this way, you can uh, reduce the chances that you're going to be running out of juice in the middle of the day. Now, how is battery life? Well, it's actually not that bad if you leave on automatic screen brightness. But you may not want to do that because the automatic screen brightness setting on this device makes the screen very, very dim. If you turn off automatic screen brightness and just get a little bit of extra brightness so you can actually see what you're doing, battery life goes down fast. I'm talking 2% every minute. It's really ridiculous. So most people are going to keep this on uh, the, the automatic screen brightness setting so that they don't have to swap the batteries. Okay, so let's talk about this device. I don't think that anyone would say that this is a good looking device. It looks kind of rugged, it looks kind of uh, asymmetrical. We've got a thin bezel on the left side and a thick bezel on the right side. The reason there's the thin bezel on the left side, you're going to see when we pop out the second screen, is to reduce the little bezel between the two screens so that they kind of flow together and appear kind of like a tablet display. And it kind of works out that way, although there's always that black bar there that seems kind of weird, but you get used to it. We've got a set of Android buttons here and another set of Android buttons on the other display. The way that you know which ones are active is that the active buttons will illuminate, so it's pretty easy in that respect. We've got a Sprint logo up here with two chrome accents. Over on the back, we've got a Kyocera logo. Uh, we've got a... 5 megapixel camera, LED flash, and a self-portrait mirror. Haven't seen one of those in a while. A really loud speaker, which provides a lot of volume. We can pop off the back. If we put a little pressure here, and we get the battery back here, the 1370 milliamp hour battery. Now let's talk about what's inside. We've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 1 gigahertz processor, one of the newest ones. It's not dual core, but this device is actually pretty fast. Uh, it's also got 512 megabytes of RAM. It has about 500 megabytes of ROM storage built on, uh, on the uh, actual device, but then you get the 8 gigabyte chip that comes in the box. It's a class 4 card, so you get a little bit of extra storage there. Let's turn over to the side of the device. We've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and kind of an awkwardly placed uh, power switch. Then here's the volume rocker, the micro USB charger and sync port. Really nothing else around the device. If you look at this from the profile, the sort of ugliness continues. 
again, I don't think anyone would call this a svelte, sleek, sexy device. It's just, it's not. It's thick. It looks squarish. It's a box. But that's okay. What's really important about this device are the two screens. Now, both screens have the same resolution. 800 down by 480 across, 3.5 inch diagonal. Now, because each of these displays have WVGA resolution and a 3.5 inch screen size, the pixels are very, very small. A lot smaller than, say, an Evo or a Desire HD, which packs the same amount of pixels in a 4.3 inch display, which means that text on the screen is very, very crisp. If you put these two displays together, you get 960 by 800 resolution, which is higher than the iPhone. You're getting a lot of pixels there. You're even starting to rival the amount of pixels you get on a tablet. Most tablets have 1024 by 768 resolution. Again, on this, you're getting 960 by 800. So you're getting close. So this idea that the Kyocera Echo is kind of a tablet, kind of a phone, sort of makes sense in that respect. Okay, so let's talk about how you actually use this thing. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to open up the second screen with one hand. I can try, but you want to make sure that you're over carpet when you do this because uh, you might drop it. Okay, so there we go. It just popped open. And I'm going to turn off the screen here to reduce the, uh, the glare. So there are two positions that you can put the Echo into. This is the first position, which is really great when you're typing an email or something because as you're going to see, um, if we go into the Android market or something and we pull up the keyboard, we get a keyboard, a full, very large keyboard on the bottom there. So you kind of have an HTC uh, Touch Pro 2-like tilting screen here. But the biggest problem with that is that now, if you tap on the screen, because it's not locked in place, it's going to move and wiggle all the time. So most people are going to revert to the second position. And by the way, you just saw me try to touch these Android buttons here, but it, it, is the, it are these, it are these. I should edit that part out. It is these that are illuminated. I'm not going to edit that out, actually. Uh, so that's how you know which buttons to press. So the second position is you put the screen flat, and then you push them together. And then you get the uh, kind of thin bezel. As you can see, both of these have a thin bezel where they touch. But it's not that thin when you put it together. Uh, let's go to a website like Pocket Now, and you'll notice that it, it does get kind of weird seeing a thick black line. But it's definitely something you get used to. Now, when you're done in this view and you want to put the phone back together so you can actually fit it into your pocket, again, it's a little bit awkward. You can't do it with one hand, or at least I haven't been able to after a day or two of practice. What you have to do is pop it out, use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of elbow grease to push it back over. Now, this hinge so far is proving to be pretty strong. Um, obviously, Kyocera made sure that this hinge could withstand a lot of abuse because people were going to be uh, flipping it around many, many times per day, and so far so good. It looks to be a really robust hinge that locks into place, although again, it would be nice if it locked in this tilting position. It just kind of hangs there. But most people will put it into this sort of tablet mode to be able to access it uh, with both screens sort of facing you in the same direction. So let's put it back. And of course, when you put it back on top, it's going to go back into just the standard Android configuration, and now you're looking at one screen. And finally, a note on build quality. How does this feel on the hand? It actually feels quite good. Uh, it is boxy. It does feel a little bit awkward in a day when you've got devices with rounded edges and you've got devices with the soft touch plastic on the back. Uh, but it's not too bad, actually. It's got a lot of weight to it, which might be one of the reasons why it feels high quality. But we give Kyocera high marks in terms of build quality. There's not really much metal to speak of, except if you look at the hinge, I'm sure there's some metal involved there. You have plastic here, plastic up here. The screen seems to be glass. Pretty sure it's glass there. Uh, so pretty good build quality. The only thing we really wish about this device in terms of hardware is that Kyocera spent more time to make this a good-looking device uh, we wish that they made it thinner, and we wish that they had made it easier to slide out this second display, because right now it's, it's just awkward, and it takes a lot of practice to get used to. So that was the hardware review of the Kyocera Echo. We've got another video coming up which will explain exactly how the dual screen configuration works, how you get one app on one screen and one app on the other, what happens when a, when a program stretches the app across both displays, and a lot more. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if there's something specific you want to see in our coverage of the Kyocera Echo, drop us a comment and let us know. Thanks for watching. That's it for now.